real, you know, crisis yeah. situations. Absolutely. Hostage negotiations. He going into buildings. I guess. Yeah. Our bad guys have uh, bullets flying by me, but he loves it. He and he says it makes him a better fighter. Well, he's a police officer first, boxer second. And in this game of boxing, you can't put it second. You need to put it first. But good luck to him. We'll see how he does tonight. It's redemption time for him anyway. You know, this is the second time here in the States. The last time he was here, he suffered a huge knockout by Big Baby Miller. Let's see if he overcomes. Finished up his training in Vegas with former light heavyweight champion Eddie Mustafa. Over the top rope, <laughs> he goes at six foot five. Just climb that top rope. Bogdan Danu. And he is gonna shortly you know, realize who this crowd Let me see. is favoring. Because all night long, they have been flying the flag and waving it proud. The Bulgarian flag as Kubret Kulev makes his way into the hangar. Says he will keep fighting until he delivers on his dream, and that is to win a heavyweight championship for his late father. His father, a national champion back home himself. Says it's not about the money, it's about the championship. And the truth is, this division is chock full of opportunities and a whole lot of money, and he's risking some of it tonight by just stepping in the ring. He's already the number one mandatory challenger for Anthony Joshua in the IBF. He is an outrageous personality, famous back home, hoping to be here stateside, as is his wife, famous in Bulgaria. She is a singer and a model. He is freewheeling with his comments that are tinged with political, incorrect, comedic splash, and he's got great experience in the ring. Five years ago, he lost to Klitschko. He said, I didn't know enough back then. Now I do, seasoned and confident as he jumps over the top row. Kubrat Pulev. We are ready for heavyweights with a lot on the line. For the official introductions, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the hangar here in Costa Mesa, California. As Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Geico. Judges in rings high for a main event, we have Eddie Hernandez Sr., Patrick Russell, and Zachary Young. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world on ESPN, live from Costa Mesa, California, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks, hailing from Bucharest, Romania. He weighed in at 239.6 pounds. With a record of 18 wins and one loss, he has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting heavyweight world rank contender, introducing the sniper, Bogdan Dinu. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner in this 10-round main event, wearing red trunks with white trim, presented in association with Epic Sports. Hailing from Sofia, Bulgaria, he weighed in at 249.8 pounds. His record, 26 wins, one loss, 13 wins, coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former world title challenger making his U.S. debut, currently the IBF number one ranked heavyweight contender, introducing the Cobra, Cobra Pula. The referee in charge now to give instructions, introducing Raul Kais Sr. All right, let's take out, let's take out the stuff. Dino. Dino. Go. 
Okay, gentlemen, I gave you instructions downstairs. Punches here, fine, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Ulev, the 2008 Olympian, is a super heavyweight for Bulgaria. On his lead up during his amateur career in 2007 as the Golden Belt Tournament in Constanza, Romania, he faced another up and coming Olympic hopeful. It's the guy opposite him now. They fought in the amateurs, and Pulev won a 14 to 4 decision over Danu. Here they are as 30-something heavyweights with so much on the line for Pula. Nice jab right there from Danu. You know, both these guys have pretty good jabs. Pula really steps in behind his jab occasionally. And that lead hand, just pay attention to it. It's like a magic wand. You know, it's, it's, it's used to set up the right hand for Pula. I think Danu actually had the quicker hands, the quicker feet, and throws the flashier combinations. Pulev is accurate. He doesn't waste anything. He has that classic Eastern European style. He's only going to throw when necessary or when he feels like he can land a punch. Obviously, the Eastern European style has had a good run in recent history of the heavyweight division, i.e. the Klitschko brothers. For, for the layman, the guy in the street, explain that style, Dre. It's a straight up and down style. They don't bend their knees a lot. They typically have the left hand, or if they're left-handed, they'll have the right hand out in front as a barometer. Yes. And they like to throw big right hands, and they don't throw a lot of combinations. They, they, they major on power shots. Upright, big jab, huge right hand that comes behind. And don't that, see a lot of body shots either. Nope. And to add to that, they'll close the gap on you and tie you up no, and not no, allow no, you to work. It wasn't work. back of the head. It wasn't back That's of the head. That's what Pulev is doing right it now. It was back here. Let's go. Against the new. Stop refereeing. It's a very Stop efficient style with no wasted energy. Well, you saw it with uh, the Klitschko. That's with right. The Klitschko brothers as well. The epitome of it with the Klitschko brothers. There was that big right hand coming behind the jab from Pulev. Questions about the news last fight against Big Baby Miller. You know, during the fighting meeting, I asked, I said, hey, to me, it looked like you quit in that fight. You could have got up and, and finished the fight. And he said, you know, my jaw, I got locked jaw. I didn't understand what he was talking about. I mean, <laughs> he was trying to find an excuse. You know, first time job. I heard that one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Danu went so far as to explain it. That was his last fight, the knockout loss. He said, listen, there were a few days. I couldn't eat for a few days. Had to go see a physician back home. I get that. But, you know, you're in a fight of your life. You know, and being a fighter, you got to have heart. And you got to continue to fight through pain. And that's what makes us fighters gladiators and who we are. 10 seconds, stop at the back. This is U.S. debut back on November 17th, 2018. And now he comes right back and faces another bell, top gentlemen. 10 heavyweight in Pula. End of one, stay with us. Lots to do. I hope you fueled up. Sure did. That storm sure ripped through. Yep, we got to fix that fence. And heard the cattle back in. Let's get at it. The Joseph A. Bank Traveler Collection event. Get Traveler dress and sports shirts for $39. Traveler suits $279. Plus buy one, get one free on almost everything else. The Traveler Collection event. Only at Joseph A. Bank. You can lead an Irish man to water, but don't try and put it in his drink. <laughs> Proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Shalom, Dad. 
37 year old Kubrat Pulev bouncing on his toes, coming out for round number two against Bogdan Denu. Something interesting happened at the end of that first round, guys, as Pulev went back to his corner. He's one of those fighters that doesn't sit on the stool. He stands there and looks across at his opponent. Meanwhile, in the blue corner for Denu, the stool was set up for him. Then you heard the corner say they looked over at Pulev and said, get that stool out of here. Get ours out of there, too. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Mental <laughs> warfare. You don't want to give your opponent an inch. Edge, yep. Not an inch. The new has to be careful from pulling back. I see. I see the right hand coming over the top. The new every now and then he'll jab from a little bit too close or drop that lead left hand and just look for that right hand from Pulev. Check in with our ringside reporter, Bernardo. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad working for the first time with Danu, who gets tackled there. And he says, hey, the plan was to use a stool, but we're in great shape. And once we saw he wasn't going to use one, we're definitely not going to use one. Former light heavyweight champion of the world. That was pretty funny to hear Eddie as he looked across. He said, Get that stool out of here. We're not going to use one either then. I think Danu was probably thinking, Coach, what are you doing? <laughs> I need the stool. There's that probing jab there from the new as you hear the chance of Pulev Pulev going up the rhythm of Pulev is to use his jab he's got a powerful jab he doesn't really throw you know any wasted jab he throws a strong jab and then he comes in with that big one too when he sees an opening he'll tie up and reset and he'll do that all night long Dre can be frustrating at times especially when you want to work in the inside but the way you get a guy like Pulev is you got to use your feints, you got to use your jab, you got to get him to commit, make him miss, and then make him pay on the way in. I also like the feints from Pulev. If you want to land a shot and you're not landing it, don't keep doing the same thing and, you know, keep missing the shot. You have to feint your way in, get a reaction from the opponent, hopefully create an opening, and then let the shot go. That right there. Right hand trying to come over the top and then looking for left hands on the back end. But to do most of that block there. There's body work now from Pula. Break, let go, let go. You can start to wear your opponent down by fainting a lot. Oh, yeah. Keep, not, keep not them on the, edge. Yeah, keep not them on the, edge. Exactly. Yeah. Mentally. Mentally. You can keep them on edge. Pula has good defense for a big man as well. A good point right. He gets in range, he gets out of range, he's back in range, gets out of range. Very good legs. Stop with the go! Very involved fighter, 37 years old. Everybody's standing. <laughs> we all standing. You know, this game is, you know, to me, 90% mental. You know, any edge you can gain, you know, you got to send a message to your opponent that, hey, I'm in shape too, and you in for a fight. You know, it's interesting, obviously, dealing with the heavyweight division. We don't have the typical day before drama that we do with the other weight classes where you're worried about getting on the scale. But yet yesterday, we had a scheduled meeting with Kubrat Pulev, and he wasn't there. He wasn't there at the time. They were looking around there. Where is he? He's in the gym we're getting some work in. He said, I just like to keep working, keep going. Yeah. Keep sweating. We asked him about that. His exact words were, I have many, many energies. <laughs> many energies. <laughs> many energies. Uh, by the way, he's a hysterical guy to sit and spend time with. Oh, he's I mean, charismatic. He's so he's funny. Funny guy, right? Yeah, he Very had, funny. He had guy. his laugh in the whole fighter meeting. Very loose. Uh, big fight on the horizon for him tonight, but he, he couldn't tell in that fighter meeting by talking to him. Oh, 
And speaking of the horizon, I mean, the landscape of this division, he could be one of the guys that has a monstrous opportunity. He's number one for Anthony Joshua in IBF. Joshua's going to be fighting Big Baby Miller. You know about Deontay Wilder, Dominic Brazil. That's quite happening in May. And then just announced today officially, we got the reaction from Tyson Fury, the lineal heavyweight champion, the guy who has never lost in the ring, 27-0-1. He will be fighting Tom Schwartz, the undefeated 24-0 German, June 15th. The word we're getting ringside is expect that fight to be at the MGM brand in Vegas, and it will, of course, be on an ESPN platform. Tyson Fury in action on ESPN on June 15th. I like what I saw just now from Danu. He actually took the right hand. He threw a double jab and took the right hand down to the body of Kulev and got his attention. He needs to continue to invest in the body work to slow down Kulev and discourage him a little bit and keep him from coming forward and just walking straight into his kitchen. Danu has to go into the lion's den yeah. in order to get to the body of Kulev, and I don't know if he's willing to do that. He was right there, yeah. but he didn't let the punches go. Well, he threw a couple of body shots. One particular in the right hand landed. But he covered up right away because he knew the return shot was coming. Well, a lot of the times, you know, guys that don't fight well in the inside, they, they look to tie up, Dre. You know that. They look to tie up, and that's what these guys like to do. Good body shot right there from Danu. But I like how it's at distance, so that way he doesn't get countered in the punches. If he's a little bit too close, he can be countered over the top with a big shot. For a big man, Danu has above average hand speed, but doesn't always have the temperament to let his shots go. Watch your feet. He said he learned from the Miller fight. That was a short notice fight. Yeah. He said he's gonna be a different man tonight. No. I'm looking, I'm always looking at the mouth, trying to see if the mouth is open. He looks all right right now, and I'm talking about the new. He's looking okay physically right now. Respect the bell, gentlemen. Stop at the bell. Stop! End of three. It's time now for a switch moment brought to you by Boost Mobile. And on the undercard tonight is a fine-looking prospect, a Russian junior welterweight, Maxime Mad Max Dadashev. And we were thrilled of one of our colleagues who had the call of Mad Max, Christina Poncher on ESPN Plus. Oh! Oh! Big right hand and left from Dadashev that floors Sesmundo. Oh, and it's it. over. That's it. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful combination. One, two punch from Dadashev, and he scores. Mad Max is now 13-0 with 11 knockouts, and what a great call of the combination by Christina. She was excellent tonight in calling Mad Max's fight there on the undercard, handling the blow-by-blow -blow duties on ESPN Plus. Not a lot of women in that role here in our sport. We're thrilled to travel each and every week with her. She knows the game inside and out and has such a great passion. The coolest thing about Christina is, is that she's so cool that she can get valuable information and get inside the camp and talk to the fighters. They appreciate her. They appreciate her work. Round number four here of our heavyweight man event. Danu on the charge. And look at the blood now. Coming from the left eye of Pulev. Box, box. That's a bad cut. Bad cut suffered by the top 10 heavyweight Pulev. Remember, this is a risk. He's the number one challenger to face Anthony Joshua. He's risking it all here against Danu, who's swarming him, looking for the upset. Right hand comes back as blood is splattered everywhere ringside here. Red-faced is Pulev. Bad cut on the face of Pulev. Yes, it is. And you see him rubbing his eye, Dre. Trying to clear his vision. That was the temperament I talked about in the previous round that Danu doesn't typically show, but he showed it, and you saw the hand speed, the variations of shots that he landed, and you see the results that he's getting. Yeah, fighters can definitely be influenced when they see blood. They definitely get him pumped up, moving forward. That is a brutal gash above the left eye of Pulev. 
And folks, keep in mind of what we've been setting up all night long about the landscape of this division, about all the cash. Heck, you had Timothy Bradley throwing $100 bills everywhere on the set earlier. This is the division loaded with jackpot opportunities. Pulev didn't need to fight this fight. And now he's going to have to overcome this painted red from head through torso here in round four. Pulev right now put combination together in desperation. to try to get back into this fight right now against the new he knows he has to do something because it's a bad cut over his eye and the doctor can step in and stop the match i hope he has a good cut man tonight let's go that's the response that you want to see from your fighter and pull you when facing adversity i know rudy hernandez is a trainer but i don't know how good his work is being a cut man there's a lot of responsibility and being a cut man, you know, you got to pay attention to the, the referee. You got to keep him away. Then you got to pay attention to the doctor. Then you got to pay attention to the cut and calm your fighter down. And he's charging ahead with right hands of his own. Look at this. Pull him on the comeback to the bell. And now it's time to deal with that cut. Drama here at the hangar. They need to get who left sitting down already. He doesn't use the stool. And now they've got to reach up to tend to that cut. Oh, that's a bad gash. Veteran cornerman having to make an X with the swabs just to try to apply pressure. Look at the right hands from Danu that open up the gash. There it is right there. Huge right hand from Bowden Danu, the upset seeking get back, get back. contender. Time! And then Pulev came back late in the round. And the doctor has stepped right into the ring. Tess, did you see the way he turned that right hand over? The turn, the turning of the hand is what caused that cut. That's the reason why you turn. Turn it over. What a reaction from Pulev as he raises his hands and smiles to this partisan crowd. But if this fight gets stopped, and it's a TKO win for Danu, that lofty status lost. Let's check in with Bernardo on that cut and what he's hearing in the corner. Rudy Hernandez is an experienced cut man, both in boxing and in UFC. He says, this is one of the worst cuts I've seen in boxing. It's going to be a challenge to control the bleeding. Listen, we are all experienced in sitting ringside for thousands of fights. Look at the amount of blood already on the canvas, and we're just over a half minute into the fifth round. It opened up in the midst of the fourth round, but it's that crisscross, it's that scissoring yes. effect. And you saw what a challenge it was for Rudy Hernandez just to apply the pressure, to try to get the adrenaline in with the swabs and apply pressure on that crisscross, right. fork in the road cut above the left eye. Like I told you, you know, the new turned that right hand over in the twist. That's what in the impact is what caused cuts like this to open up Stop. on your opponents. It's perfect technique and execution from the new to land that shot on the top of the eye. Here it is. Watch how he turns this shot over. Boom. Look at that. He, he came behind the left hand. He didn't throw it straight. He chopped down. Yeah. He blinded Puyev. And then he came with a devastating right hand that woke up to new, and now we have what we have. It isn't often that you see instantly on impact the blood gush. But with that torque and that turnover on the knuckles there, right at the end, that snap, that's exactly what it did. There are the power punches in the last round. One of those 13 was that right hand we just showed you, but a dominating last round, at least the first two minutes for Danu. The new, the, new, the new right now can't afford to lay back and try to coast here. He needs to continue to fire his combinations and use his jab and not allow the big man 
Pulev to get inside. Even though it may not be the right time to take a round off, that's what Denise doing right now. He threw a lot of punches for a big man in that last round. And he shot a good body Ooh. shot from Pulev right there. Ooh. Excellent body shot as you could hear the thud of that right hand on the Romanian. Denise is recovering from all the offense that he let loose in that last round. That's why Pulev is having the round that he's having right now. Yeah. Well, I love the urgency from Pulev. He, he doesn't want this fight to get stopped. He's trying to, he's looking for a knockout right now. And, and the you silver have lining, to think, after every round, the ringside physician is going to take a look at that cut and determine the immediate future. It's a bad cut, Joe, but the silver lining is, at least right now, it's not going in the eye of Pulev. At least it doesn't look like it is. Good right hand from Pulev right there. This is an excellent bounce back round for Kubrat Pulev. End of five. It's not just the ships, the armor, or the aircraft. It's something more. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside each and every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Dentec knows teeth grinding can feel like 250 pounds of pressure. Stop the painful grind with Dentec. Exclusive forming tray provides a snug fit and grind-free sleep. Protect with Dentec. Look above the left eye of Pulev. You will see that Y-shaped cut that has been filled in with the Vaseline as well as the adrenaline. It won't stay that clean much longer. It is a nasty gash with depth to it. Yeah. And if I was Danu, I would be targeting that eye. Anytime I get close, I'll put my head on that eye and on that side. I'll use my jab and try to poke at it, and I'll be using tons of right hands, different variations of right hands to the head and the body, just like this. Veteran cornerman Rudy Hernandez trying to stop it. Meanwhile, his fighter doing them all a favor by being the aggressor here. Pulev right now is trying to break the spirit of the new. I think he saw the same thing that I saw in his fight against Big Baby Miller. A man that wasn't sure, a man that quit, a man that gave up. There's Look the cut. That, that is what they were dealing with in between rounds. And you see the shape of it and the position of it right on the edge of the brow against the bone. It opened up instantly with the torque of a big right hand in the fourth round. But right now it's Bulev who has been gaining momentum as he drives a right hand down against a new has to win to maintain his status. Hoping to fight for a title, he's the number one contender. It all goes away with a loss here. Racing against time, the time being that cut. Check in with Mark Pregel. The guy who's racing against time is Denu. He's never beyond, been beyond the sixth round for Pulev. Not only is it a cut, but it's the kind of dramatic comeback that can make your career. Yeah, Danu cannot afford to relax. He needs to let his hands go. That will create some, de some defense for him. But right now, he's taking a beating right now against the ropes against Pulev. Tremendous work with the right hands. He's slowly being broken down right now psychologically like you said Tim yeah when you hit a fighter with your best shot you created a cut that he created and he's coming back like this it can break you yeah Bernardo is with the cut man Rudy Hernandez Rudy you've done great work so far how do you work on a cut like that I'm looking I just get look at yes no you know what it's a, a lot of experience you know in, in cuts with MMA and in boxing so just, you know, it just comes natural. You told me it was really bad, but the work you've done on it is great so far. Um, you know, so far, so good, Joe. Only in boxing do we describe that as great work when a guy looks like he has a giant paintbrush of red paint going down the side of his face. Great stuff. 
Though Brett Pulev has been on a hot streak, six straight wins since his only career loss. And keep in mind, that was a world title challenge to a prime Vladimir Klitschko when he wasn't half the fighter he is now. Pulev has improved so much and has all the experience. He's got wins over Derek Chisora and Sam Peter and Huey Fury, the cousin of lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. And now adversity that he faces here. Round number seven, big right hand from the top ten heavyweight as he's raining right hands down on Danu. Cut so badly in round four, the urgency is there, and he scores the knockdown as Danu crumbles to the ground. I think one of those came in late. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hit him on top of the head while yep. he was on the floor. I believe the rule is he probably might get dq Could so be wrong. If the move cannot continue. If he's yes. Stop. You hit him when he was down in the back of the head. And I don't think he will. I really don't think he will. Get up. Get up. He was get definitely up down get up when that last one came in. He's, he's hurt, he got knocked on, he got hit behind he the back in the of the middle head. Of so check him out, he can continue, I just want you to look at him. All right, can he stand up? All right, get up, get up, Dino. Dino, on, let's go. Dino let's go. stand up. Let's go. Get up. He's not going to stand up. Yeah. We'll give you a couple minutes to get ready. Yeah. Let's give him a couple minutes. Yeah. I know how that ended. Knocked down, in this case, he hit him the behind the back of the head. It was a continuation, so it was an accidental foul, but hopefully he can continue. If not, we'll go to the scorecards. Accidental foul. You okay? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Get over there. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. What's your name? Where are you from? Okay, you want to continue fighting? Yeah. Okay. okay. Count the knockdown, one point for hitting him behind the back of the head. Count the knockdown, one point for hitting him behind the back of the head. Let's get back. Count the knockdown, one point for hitting him behind the back of the head. Stay there. Andre, knockdown counts, but one point for hitting him on the floor in the back of the head. Minus one point, hitting him when he was down. One point. One point for hitting him when he was down. Now go back over there and don't be crazy. Chime in. Box. Yes. Take the point away. So here we go. The continuation of round number seven after the knockdown scored by Pula. Take the late punch away. Danu is on his way out the door. Yes, he is. Pulev has broken his spirit. He recovered from that big round that Danu had. He didn't allow the cut to bother him. And now Danu is looking for somewhere to lay down. And Pulev has to give him a reason to lay down. Well, you know, Dre, once you quit, the second time is easier. He's down again. Second knockdown yeah. score. Another Four. right hand. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You OK? You want to continue? Okay. Minute and a half for Danu to try to survive. A sweeping right hand he tries to come back with. Behind the jab, looking for a right hand is pulled up. Came over the top and just missed that time. Can he close the show in style and come back from that nasty cut? Rudy Hernandez doing such a good job to calm that cut down. And now Pulev has done his job as the aggressor. Now what Pulev Stop. needs to do, he no. needs to put his punches in combination. Oh, he needs to change the speed up. You know, the new understands what's coming. The right hand is coming behind the jab. But if Pulev, if he wants to get him up out of there, get busy with his hands. We are using the unified rules, so there is no three knockdown rule. Right hand tries to come around the side. Danu holds up to it. 40 seconds to try to get out of this round for Danu. Danu will still throw occasionally, but they're desperation shots. They don't have bad intentions on them. If Pulev lands the right shot, this fight is going to be over. Tried to land the right uppercut moments ago. Behind the jab now, another big right hand splits the guard, and that puts him down, and this fight is over.
Great win. Spirited effort. Kubrat Pulev. Hold on, son. Hold on, hold on. Just stay here for a second. Let the doctor look at you. Fight had a little bit of everything, didn't it? And a whole lot of risk in that fourth round when that cut opened up. Bogdan Danu, who was unbeaten just this fall, runs into Big Baby Miller, and now number one in the IBF, that guy right there, the Bulgarian Kubrat Pulev. The Bulgarian fans got exactly what they wanted. No, they did the right thing there in the seventh round. Yeah. We didn't have Griffin Roy Jones. We had a fight that continued and got the outcome that you expected. Let's go back and show you that first knockdown. That's what caused the pause in the action. Watch as the new hits the canvas and one extra punch comes in while he's down. This is what happens when you make too many defensive moves without a punch. He got hit on top of the body, actually behind the head, twice. Those are two fouls right there. It's a late Pulev. shot from Pouillet, clearly. But, but to his credit, Danu was ducking low yeah. the whole time. You can't tell if he's going to duck low and come up with a punch or if he's, gonna, if, if he's actually going down. I think that was the issue with Pouillet right there. But you still can't hit behind the head. It's a foul. The There's no question yeah. about that. But I think. They took the time, they assessed him. They fought on, there was a point deduction. This was the second knockdown, another right hand. That was on the side of the head. No question about this knockdown right here. The first right hand actually did some damage and then he came around towards the ear, towards the back of the head. And then this is the finisher guy. Everything yeah. came behind the jab. Big right hand to the back of the head right there. That hurt to me, you can see his body kind of shudder. And he just made the decision. He made the decision. That, that's it, that's he enough. He I'm quit. done. Yes. I'll tell you right now. He's entertaining. I, hey, I love And he acts like a fighter. Love. And he does. He acts like a champion. Let's make it official. For that, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 40 seconds in round number seven. A referee in charge, Raul Caiz Sr. stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout and victorious in his U.S. debut, the Cobra. We're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, we will hear from Kubret Pulev overcoming the cut and coming up with the impressive knockout win. What is his future in the